What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's episode is just a little bit of fun for the people out there who love my style, probably many of you since you're on my channel learning from me, but we're gonna be talking about how to spar or fight like me. And the reason I thought this would be fun is I know in the past guys like Masato, Albert Krauss, Andy Sauer, Bokao, all these guys, I wanted to know how to move like them. I wanted to be more like them. So this just seems like the perfect episode out there for anybody who's like, oh, I kind of want to move a little bit more like Gabriel, but I'm not sure what's happening in his head. So for the sake of the lesson today, let's talk about sparring. Let's talk about how we're gonna move around in sparring and be like me that will translate into the ring if you're somebody who fights. But when we go to the gym, what's our thought process? The very first thing that I want you to recognize about me, whether it's fighting or in the gym, is whenever I'm being offensive, I'm being even more so defensive. And this is something where I think a lot of people lack. And if you want to be more like me, you've got to have that defensive mindset dialed in all the time. So when I step forward and I throw something like jab cross body hook, which a lot of you guys really like, a lot of people ask me about my body hook, and we will definitely be talking about that today, the details behind it and how I go about landing it. But when I step forward, I'm not just going one, two, three, attack, 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 only looking at his holes and trying to land. I'm actually going, okay, jab, hand tight, really high. Shoulder tight on the other side, really high. During the transition, is he throwing anything? Am I safe to continue? If at some point I feel like, oh shoot, he's gonna throw, I might pull out of it, like the actual attack, or I might make an adjustment, like drop my head off to the side, or lift my shoulder higher. So as I step in, I'm taking that, is he gonna attack? No, he's not. Okay, is he gonna attack here? Yes, I'll roll. If there's no attack, then I just exit nice and clean. But wrapping your head around staying defensively oriented while executing offense is one of the first things that you can do to implement your fight style to be more like mine. Now, we just talked about the left body hook. Let's wrap our head around that a little bit more because it is something which is just so big in my arsenal. Let's talk about first why it is part of my arsenal and why a lot of you guys go, oh, Gabriel Vargas left body hook. I want to throw more like him. How did I accomplish it? Well, the truth of the matter is I just got good at throwing it because I would execute over and over and over inspiring at the gym because I didn't want to hurt people to the head. I had guys who would go really hard against me. I was smaller, much smaller than I am right now, like 20 pounds less, but I was more skilled. And I recognized that, yeah, I could thump these guys in the head a lot, even though they're going too hard on me, but I don't want to. So I decided I'm gonna hit them to the body and I'll drop them like that or hurt them like that. And then they'll slow down and I don't have to leave the gym feeling like a jerk because I let somebody go home with a headache. So if you're wanting to get better at that left body hook, start throwing it a lot in sparring because that was what made the difference for me. The same combo we just talked about a moment ago, one, two, three, that's how I started. And staying defensively oriented as I threw it is what helped me build confidence. I would just step in, chin down, chin down, hands up, shoulders high, throw it. Sometimes I'll break away from the combo mid attack, but a lot of times I just go, I'm throwing it no matter what, but I'm staying defensively oriented so I can make those small adjustments with my body to make sure I don't take a shot while executing that three piece combo. In addition, my body hook is a lot longer than a lot of people. So a lot of people think I throw my hook like this a lot of times, so I do the same thing down to the body. But if I just came from jabbing, that means I have to step in. And that slows down the pace at which I can get to my left body hook. I don't take that step, I go one, two, three. And it means that my arm is not bent, but more long, and I take my wrist and instead of keeping it square, from my elbow, I fold it over. So now I can land with my knuckles and have a nice rounded shot. And in addition, that long shot allows me to land behind somebody's elbow. 
because it's long and lengthy, I get that wraparound effect. So I can come one, two, and then right into three without taking an extra beat. It's one, two, three, not one, two, pause, three. And this is something within my fight style that has allowed me to be successful with those shots over and over. Now, the next thing about my fight style, which you've probably noticed if you wanna move around with me, is I am very diverse. I don't just throw all hands the whole fight, or I don't just execute Muay Thai style the whole time. You'll see me snap up a Muay Thai style left round kick and then go to some crisp boxing and then throw a spinning kick or a flying knee. I like to mix it up a lot. This means that when you're at the gym, you don't want to embrace one style as the only style that you can do. Like I'm a boxer. This is how I'm gonna move, it's the only way. Yeah, try that. Execute that in the fight. You can move around, throw your shots, but then once you back out, you very quickly go, oh, okay, what's open now? Oh, his body's open, but I'm at long range. Okay, I'm gonna become a karate stylist for a moment. Once I come out of that, oh, maybe he's running at me, I'm gonna jam him up with a left round kick, kind of Muay Thai style. So being diverse, in your ability to switch from one fight style to the other is a big part of what has allowed me to create that style which you guys know. The next time you're on the bag, try that. Like it's very hard to do in pad work because it's up to the pad holder to control everything for you. And if you don't have somebody who's mixing up styles like spinning back fist, jab, cross, jab, stop me on the round kick, give me a teep, give me a cross up or cross. If you don't have somebody being diverse, you don't have an opportunity to practice. But on the bag, you can. You can go tight range, step back, long range, throw some good kicks, fake the kicks, get to the Superman punch, go into some close range, jump out, land a spinning back fist, and you're all over the place, making yourself very unpredictable and making it much more difficult for people to decide what style you might bring in your next attack. Something else which people have noted about my fight style and many people have commented on is the balance that I have. They say you very rarely look off balance. And I would say, or I would agree that yes, that's 100% true. I don't ever really feel off balance. I very rarely hit the floor. I've been thrown a few times with the like Muay Thai clench throws, but they're infrequent. And most of the time I can rebalance myself when somebody tries to throw. How do I go about doing that? Well, I practice lots of movement drills, but more importantly, I just always practice that balance. I'm always on my toes, I'm always moving, I'm moving in and out, keeping my weight structured and always looking for that ideal stance. Now, it's the return off kicks, which are so very important, or sorry, is so very important. So once I throw a kick and I place my foot down, it needs to be in the perfect spot. If I put my foot slightly out of position and now somebody gives me a little shove or a push, I have to readjust back to that perfect stance. But landing in the perfect stance all the time is something which I think creates a solid foundation of my fight style. So how do you go about drilling this? Well, first understand what your stance is. Some people like wide stances, some people like narrow, some people like long, some people like short. Find where you feel most confident and then actively work as you're doing everything else. You're throwing hands, you're throwing kicks, you're working on defense. Actively be aware of the fact, are you in the right stance for yourself or not the right stance? And this will just come with drilling and drilling and drilling, but it's kind of that mindset, like I already said, about as you're offensive, you're being defensive. Well, as you're being offensive and defensive, you're also focused on your footwork. But the nice thing is once you do that enough, then you don't have to think about it. Like I don't actively think about my footwork anymore or my stance or my position because it's just locked in. It's just something which is like a motor, a motor skill now, which I don't have to even contemplate. But you don't get there without practicing, so you guys start drilling. You start going, okay, I'm throwing my shots, I'm moving forward, how's my stance, how's my stance feel? Ooh, front kick back down, where's my stance? I go into some sort of spinning technique, boom, am I back to my ideal stance? Yes, and the more you do that, the more your foundation will feel real solid, which means then your counter shots, which I also love, are gonna be that much better. And when you do decide to go on the offensive, you're gonna have that much more power. I'm actually on a time crunch today because I have a virtual private coming up in 
four minutes. So I'm gonna finish off this episode today talking about the counter shots, making sure that when somebody throws at you, you're trying to land something back. Now, I'm aware of the fact that I don't always get shots off or get shots back on people when they hit me, but that's me assessing whether there is an opening or not. It's me analyzing what is happening in the moment how do I feel? Is my stance ideal to get a shot off? So if I feel something's out of place, I'm not gonna throw back. But counter shots are one of the big things that high level fighters do, which lower level fighters, fighters lack. So you start getting your counter shots going, right? Imagine somebody comes in, they throw jab cross as your shadow boxing. You take the shots, you counter back with your low kick. Somebody comes in and they bang two shots off your guard, boom, boom. You come back with your ideal counter punch, which for me is the left hook. And you start building that muscle memory so that you have one or two favorite shots that people throw. If the uppercut's your go-to, you throw back. They throw a kick at you, you throw back a long uppercut and you make those counters something which is very dangerous for other people. If every time somebody throws at you, you have a catch and a sweep or a counter shot, it's going to scare them. And it's not necessarily that I scare people with my counter shots, but they're there, they're threatening, and I think sometimes it keeps people at bay, which then ends up making it easier for me to throw my offense and then back up, take my break, and they're more on my pace now. That's a big part of my fight style, making people fight the pace that I want. When I want a break, I can step back, I can take a break. They don't always engage with me when I'm here. If I want to push them, I'm in this zone here and I'm in tight. When you understand your cardio, you understand your capabilities, it's that much easier to start taking the fight where you want, as opposed to me just jumping in, throwing for 30 seconds hard, and then realizing in the middle, oh shoot, I don't have anything left, I have to back out. But now when you back out, you're breathing so hard that this guy recognizes and he jumps on you. That's terrible. Be in control, be aware of what is happening in the fight, be aware of your own capabilities in terms of cardio, and then you can decide, who I'm feeling good. I'm gonna make this guy work. I'm gonna test him out. I'm gonna see if he can keep going. Oh, okay, I'm getting a little tired. I'm just gonna take a second. Just a second to let this guy think that he's getting a little bit of a break, but really it's for me. So creating the pace that you want to fight at is a massive part of my fight style and something you should look into understanding, even if you're sparring. Be aware of if you want to up the pace or you want to lower the pace, and then from there, try and make it happen. I constantly do this in sparring sessions, and I feel like nine out of 10 times, if not more, I'm able to take the pace of the round to where I want it to be but it comes with practice. I am out of time, guys. I am gonna sign off. I will see you back here very soon. Remember, I'm gonna have a link down below now where you can book virtual privates with me. They're only available for another couple of weeks and the spots are snapping up very quickly, even though I tried to open up as much time as possible. So take a look down there, book if you wanna do a session and train hard. I will see you back here soon for another video.